Hi, great to be with you this morning. My name is Daryl Kwao. Government has sent a proposal on the restructuring of external debts to its official creditors. According to Reuters, the working proposal is, however, not legally binding. There is more in this report. The move could be seen as a major step for the government to get the official creditor right. committee, including the Paris Club formed in May, to consider the country's debt restructuring program. This also marks the beginning of a more detailed negotiating process that will likely see a number of proposals being exchanged. The common framework process was set up by G20 in 2020 to bring China and other newer creditor nations into the joint sovereign debt restructuring negotiations for its external debt rework. Ghana is hoping to cut about $10 billion out of a total of $52 billion over the next three years to successfully implement the International Monetary Fund program. It has also completed a domestic debt exchange program in February, in which about 65% of bondholders took part in the exercise. That was a business desk report. Now, Director of Business Operations at DLX Finance, Joe Jackson, has welcomed proposals by the International Monetary Fund calling for acquisitions and mergers of banks and non-banks, among other policies, to mitigate possible systematic financial instability in Ghana. According to him, it's obvious the sector has been greatly impacted by the domestic debt exchange program. Therefore, it is important to save the sector from collapsing than wait till things get out of control. I welcome this news. You see, the financial sector cannot wait, always wait for the market. That's why we have a regulator. The regulator has a total overview of what's happening. And the regulator and other independent observers may intervene to make sure that the market is stable and that uh, depositors' funds are protected and that the market doesn't collapse. So- you had a uh, director of business operations at Dalex Finance, Joe Jackson. Vice President Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya is upbeat. The digital transformation reforms established by the Bank of Ghana will promote financial inclusion and fast track economic growth. Speaking at the Ghana Investment and Opportunities Summit in London, uh, Dr. Bamiya said the current reforms in financial technology have eased the way of doing business through flexible payment solutions. He cited Ghana's unique identification system as one which enhances accessibility to financial products. This, he believes, positions the country as one of the leading digital hubs in Africa. I have always said that our future is in digitalization. And over the last six years, Ghana has positioned itself as one of the leading digital hubs in Africa. Ghana is the first country in Africa to implement mobile money interoperability between bank accounts and mobile money wallets. We are one of the few countries in the world to implement a universal QR code payment system with fintechs, banks, and telcos being on one platform. We are number one in the world in terms of access to financial inclusion. Indeed, thanks to the work of the Bank of Ghana, in Ghana today, anyone with a national ID card can open a bank account instantaneously by just dialing a USSD code for the bank and entering your national ID number. Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya is Vice President. Now, the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industry says a lack of engagement from state agencies when increasing fees and levies is hurting the private sector. According to the Chamber, private businesses are negatively impacted by high fees imposed by state agencies when rendering services. Speaking to Joy Business Chief Executive Mark Widua just said this makes the private sector unproductive. A, a typical case is that all the government agencies are now authorities and they are charging fees and levies are they are those fees calculated as part of our tax to gdp if they are not then they should begin to do that and they will know that businesses are paying more because aside paying your corporate tax the taxes and levies that you are paying are all part of the cost of production so Chief Executive of the Ghana National Chamber of Commerce and Industries, Mark Bedua Bwaji. Moving on to other news, the Ghana Revenue Authority has stepped up its efforts in addressing issues of transfer mispricing. There have been calls from the Chartered Institute of Taxation indicating that the phenomenon causes government to lose a chunk of revenue annually. According to Deputy Head in Charge of Operations at the Authority, Daniel Edisi, his outfit is exploring other options in combating transfer mispricing. For about a decade or more, GRA has been in the forefront trying to curb this. So we have built up capacity over the years. GRA used not to have transfer pricing unit. We even did not have any law regulating transfer pricing. 
But as we speak now, we have a law regulating transfer pricing. If you have a unit, we even end up getting more than a billion annually from transfer pricing audit. So you can testify that. Even, even though it's, an, it's, it's not an event, a process, we have gone far. Daniel Lady says deputy head in charge of operations at the Ghana Revenue Authority. Now, the city's strong recovery since December last year has helped reduce significantly the total value of foreign currency deposits with banks. Data from the Bank of Ghana showed that it dropped from over $10 billion to almost $5 billion at the end of May this year. Here's George Yaffe with more. Foreign currency accounts are all those currencies that individuals and businesses have with the various commercial banks in the country. However, for the purpose of our report, we'll express everything in dollars. Going through the Bank of Ghana's data, it is clear that the city's performance had a great impact on the total value of foreign currency accounts held with the various commercial banks in the country. When the local currency wasn't doing that well, there is a strong pickup in the foreign currency accounts held with most commercial banks in the country. However, when the city recovers, there is the reverse. This is to say that when the currency is struggling, most businesses run to save in dollars to try and hedge against inflation and the city's depreciation. The Bank of Ghana's data showed that the total value of foreign currency accounts declined significantly in December last year when the city stabilized firmly against the U.S. dollar. It picked up this year, slowed again ending May 2000. In 23. However, some analysts have argued that with several monetary measures introduced by the Bank of Ghana, including the one that is forcing the commercial banks to have city cover for every foreign currency held, that could also discourage persons opening foreign currency accounts when they don't actually need them or use it as an investment tool locally. George Raffi, with that report, uh, let's turn to the currency market for you this morning. Uh, the dollar going for 11 cd 75 pesos on the forex or retail market. The pound are going for 14 cities 55 pesos. The euro going for 12 cities 48 pesos. Now, energy strategist Dr. Yusuf Suleiman has welcomed plans to revive the Tema oil refinery. The Attorney General is currently reviewing a contract between the refinery and a private investor. Now, according to Dr. Suleiman, it is crucial to economic development, bearing in mind the current challenges the country is facing. Speaking to Joy Business, he urged government to make the revamp of the refinery a major priority. Indeed, uh, that is so refreshing to hear. Just that I just hope this is not one of the sensational news that we do have because we've had quite a lot of interesting news with respect to the refinery. But it will start with a bit of vigor and time momentum, then it will just fill it up. And so I'm just cautioning that and urging that this shouldn't be one of the news that will vaporize into thin air. It's an excellent news. We we'll just stand by and watch how things will pan out. Indeed. Energy strategist Dr. Yusuf Suleiman, another driver and vehicle licensing authority in partnership with Ghana Post Company Limited, has launched a system to deliver driver's licenses to clients at the comfort of their homes, offices, and other locations of choice. Speaking at the launch, Chief Executive of the DVLA, Kwesi Ajimambuzia, revealed that the service was instituted with a customer-centric approach, has a flat rate of 30 cities per delivery across the country. For over 20 years, DVLA has provided a regulated framework for more effective administration of driver licensing and vehicle registration. The recent growth of DVLA's consumer base has made it necessary for the authority to explore and improve means to efficiently deliver driver licenses to our clients. Chief Executive of the DVLA, Christian Jiman Buzia, now it started as an idea for a competition, but now the three young fabricators behind Jay's Design Innovations are poised to commercialize their product, an adjustable barbecue grill machine, is one of the solutions the team has created to make the lives of users easier whilst promoting good health and wellness. Today, we bring you the concluding uh, part of our feature on Jay's Design Innovations on the Joy Business Van. Joseph Boating, Estella Gamadi, Grant Agbodazi. These are the three young fabricators behind Jay's Design Innovations. Growing up, they had different ambitions. Joseph was looking forward to a job in the security services. Grant wanted to work in the Navy. And well, Estella, she wanted to be a safety manager. But they all hit roadblocks. 
However, that opened opportunities for them to enroll in the Design Technology Institute, a hub for engineering and design practice located in Accra. The three young fabricators would meet at the Institute, but it was a community innovation competition initiated by DTI that drew them closer. We were, you know, we were challenged to look within our society and then find a problem and solve. The team considered the fishing community of Jamestown and decided to create a barbecue grill machine to ease the stress faced by women fish smokers. Okay, uh, do make a date, 1 p.m. right after the Joy Business Report, 5 p.m. on Business Live on the Joy News channel. Um, great stuff. Uh, before we go, a quality market update. Could oil open trading at uh, $75.79 an ounce? A barrel, sorry. Gold is selling at $1,963.43 an 